Shabbat Shalom, friends. I don't know if any of you have had the experience where you've had a book on your shelf for many years. Maybe it was a gift, maybe you picked it up at a bookshop, maybe you don't even know how it got there. But one day the book jumps off the shelf and says, read me. I've had that a few times in my life. I didn't even know I had a certain book in a couple of cases, and suddenly one day it just seemed to move itself off the shelf and ask to be read. So if in the coming weeks I refer to a book with which you are very familiar, I beg your forgiveness. I hope you'll enjoy revisiting it with me. And if Rabbi Alan Liu of Blessed Memory, if his book, This is Real and You Are Completely Unprepared, is new to you, then I look forward to sharing some of his wisdom with you for the first time. I don't remember how and when I ordered this book, but I know I've had it for a while. And this year seemed to be the year. So you'll hear me refer to it a few times, I imagine, maybe more than that, over the next few weeks, as it is a very important book to very dear friends of mine, and uh, very quickly it is becoming a precious book to me as well. Rabbi Liu, as of course most of you likely know, was rabbi of Congregation Beth Shalom across the park uh, for many years. Um, he was considered a, a Zen rabbi, a Buddhist rabbi, and a uh, founded the Makor Or Meditation Center, which was considered the first meditation center ever connected to a synagogue. He wrote numerous works of poetry, even won the Penn Josephine Miles Award for Literary Excellence. He was a remarkable man, beloved by so many, and is remembered with great love. He passed away much too young and is still mourned by his community. Um, I'm also maybe mentioning him today because I have the privilege after services of joining with Beth Shalom for their celebration of a dear friend's son's bar mitzvah, which is going on right now. So I'm thinking of Ilan and uh, the Shelton Miller family and wishing them mazel tov. So, we are in the month of Elul, and there are particular readings that always coincide with this month that leads to the High Holidays. And Parshat Shoftim begins with what seems like a simple prescription for the establishment of a judicial system. As we well know, there was nothing simple about establishing a judicial system. But nonetheless, the words are somewhat straightforward. Judges and officers you shall appoint for yourselves in all your gates. But the Hasidic Torah commentary, the Iture Torah, read this passage with a very unique interpretation, an imperative for personal and inner mindfulness. According to the Iture Torah, these gates to which the Torah refers at the start of today's Parsha, these are the seven gates or the seven windows into each of our souls. The Hasidic masters suggest that the seven gates are the two eyes, the two ears, the two nostrils, and the mouth. Seven ways that our consciousness receives direct stimulus. And so whether or not we're able to establish judges and officers at our gates, because Many a time in Jewish history, we've had little control over who is doing the judging and the jurying and unfortunately the executing. We are, however, empowered to establish our own judges within each of us, in each of our bodies. When the shofar blows, beginning the first day of Elul and every morning thereafter except on Shabbat, so we don't get to hear it today, we are supposed to be reminded to turn our gaze inward, to start properly judging ourselves through the gates of our consciousness, to shift our focus in these weeks from wholly on the outside world to the considerable activity of refining the self. We're invited to do that. We're commanded to do that depending on how we interpret the Torah. But the customs of the month of Elul have become very precious to so many. And I'll make a little 
invitation, a plug here, for everyone to please join us these next three Wednesday evenings, one hour Zooms from seven to eight, offered by the Southside Collaborative. The first is this Wednesday, taught by Rabbi Meira Ilinsky. The following week, I will lead, and the third week, Rabbi Sami Barth will represent Am Tikva. The theme for all three is Cheshbon HaNefesh, the accounting of the soul. Very little math will be involved, I promise, but everyone can and should do an accounting of the soul at this time of year so that we come to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur in just a few weeks with our ledgers a little more balanced than they may have been. And there are some very powerful suggestions in Parshat Shof team as to precisely what we might be looking for during this month of Elul as we turn toward the gates of the soul to prepare for teshuva, for return to a good and right path. No matter who we are, we all need to do teshuva. And these suggestions come, Rabbi Lu teaches, oddly enough, in the laws of war that are enunciated toward the end of the Parsha, which Rabbi Rubin read today. Before Israel goes off to war, the Torah tells us, the officers of the army must address the people and tell them the following. Who is the man who has built a new house but has not yet inhabited it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the war, and another man inhabit his house. Who is the man who has planted a vineyard and has not yet harvested it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in war and another man harvest it. Who is the man who has been betrothed to a woman but has not yet taken her to wife? Remember, the betrothal and the actual wedding ceremony used to be quite far apart. Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the war and another man take her. The idea of this seems to be that if we leave something incomplete, we fall into a state of mind that the rabbis call trefa da'at. Trefa da'at. A torn mind. A mind that is pulled in multiple directions. And a person in such a state of mind would be of little use in an army. He would be unable to focus on the task at hand and might even present a danger to his fellow soldiers. Rabbi Lu describes working with people in end-of-life situations and how common it is for people who know that they are in their last go-round before leaving this world to want to tie up loose ends. But it shouldn't take that. Every day is a precious opportunity to tie up loose ends. In this month of Elul, we're doing a spiritual inventory, and we might begin by asking ourselves, what are the loose ends in my life? How is my da'at, my mind, treif, torn? Where are the places my mind keeps wandering to? What do I keep coming back to? What stays on the to-do list that, for reasons known only to us, never really get done? What's the unfinished business in my life? And when we look out at the world through a torn mind, our experience of the world is also torn. Now, in some cases, we might decide it's time to let go, to recognize that we're distracted by something that can never be completed, and there are those things. And in some cases, we might decide the only cure is completion, that there's nothing for it but to tie up loose ends, no way to keep our energy and focus from constantly draining away from whatever that reality is that just stays unfinished. Life is impossibly complex, isn't it? That's why my Elul session is going to focus on simplicity. We're like jugglers with too many balls in the air by far. If we take a clear look at our lives, we might decide that we can't possibly complete all the unfinished business we've set in motion. For those still going to a regular job, coming home at 9 and 10 at night, or finally turning off your computer or not, from a day's work that began at 6 a.m., our minds are torn to shreds by the thoughts of phone calls we never had time to return and the tasks we couldn't complete. And we might feel 
in a moment of quiet how much pain this leaves us in. Even for those who are not going to a regular job anymore, there's likely things on that list for which Elul comes to say, let's get it done. Let's put the pieces of our torn mind back together. And when we're in a state of that, it's important to reach out to those around us and say, my mind is torn. I need some rest. The word trafe, by the way, I can imagine a couple of light bulbs or question marks going off. You know it as the word for non-kosher, correct? Where it comes from, by the way, is Exodus chapter 22, verse 30. You shall be a holy people to me. You must not eat flesh torn by beasts in the field. Flesh torn by the beasts of the field is not to be consumed. Now, the rabbis of the Talmud took that little piece from Exodus and ran with it to create an entire system of foods and ways of being and ways of, of slaughtering animals and uh, ways we intake food and other sensory input. What's traif? And that's a large, fascinating other subject, but that's from where it comes, the notion of an animal torn. And so the rabbis not lightly use that idea to say, in the month of Elul, if our minds are torn, if we have a traif da'at, this is the time to do some mending. Even if we're not going off to war, those ancient laws of war in this parsha particularly are really useful, especially during Elul when we stand watch. We put judges at the gates of our souls. We're supposed to turn our attention from what's outside to what's inside. What shadow of fear or anger keeps us from deep emotional and spiritual connections? What unfinished business is making us have a traif da'at, a torn mind? Is the world as torn and dark as we think? Or does it just appear that way because we're taking it in through a torn mind and a hardened heart? Judges shall you put in all your gates. This is how teshuva begins. Here in the month of Elul, let us keep a mindful eye on the judges that stand watch at the gates of our souls. Each of us has beautiful work to do, important work. Let us begin. Shabbat shalom.